On today's episode in My Life in Football, we are joined by Connor Flynn Gillespie. Honor Flynn Gillespie, how are we doing today, mate? How are you doing, Bob? You good? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Just, it's been a long day already, to be honest, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Just getting on with the day. How have you been coping with the whole lockdown thing? I've been coping all right, you know, just keeping myself busy, training, studying, sort of stuff I need to sort out. So, yeah, it's all good down mm-hmm. here. So, what about you? Um, I've been just running, doing a bit of runs. I've got weights at home as well, so... Trying to stay fit as much as I can, you know. Football, football at my level at least isn't really coming back, so we'll, we'll yeah. have to wait and see what happens. Um, but yeah, other than that, you know, typical FIFA, you know. FIFA, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Time then. Mm. Uh, how how's it been over in Cyprus then? Uh, Cyprus is nice. I like the out there. Like the lifestyle, calm lifestyle suits my lifestyle. Football level. Well, I can progress a lot there, so it's one of my aims to be the next couple of years anyway, to progress and to a good level and then move on from there. Definitely. I Yeah, I used to live over there um, when I was younger, uh, yeah. so I can understand how climate and stuff works over there, so it must be hot playing. Yeah, it's hot out there, like, but it's nothing that I'm not used to, because obviously I grew up mm. in Tenerife, Spain, and my games are normally Sunday at 12 o'clock, that's probably mm-hmm. the worst time to play. Right. I'm kind of used to the heat. But the humidity in Cyprus is different. The summertime, mm. it just kills you. Mm. Mm. So we'll, we'll start with your earliest memories of playing football. My earliest memories of playing football, I'd say, from Marina, my club where I started. Right. I grew up there when I first started playing. And I left there when I was 16, so yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, who were your idols, idols growing up? I was growing up, obviously, my main idol would have been a Liverpool fan. It would have to be Steven Gerrard. Like, easy. Like, nobody, don't, nobody say Lampard is better than Steven Gerrard. I'll fight you. No. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I say Steven Gerrard. Like, my main idol growing up was him. Yeah. Did you try and emulate his game anyway? You know, take that to your play? Um, When I was younger, because I'm, I'm not that type of player that's moved around positions a lot. Yeah. Growing up, I played right back, left back, centre back, centre mid, attacking mid, even right wing, left wing. I played everywhere growing up. And obviously, it's hard to you know, play like Gerard when you're playing centre back, even though at times you would see me play box to box. I would, you know, come up into midfield. But yeah, once I started playing more regularly in midfield, yeah, I love to play that box to box midfielder. Right, yeah. Um, so. Marino, is that you know your your, your childhood childhood club? Um, yeah. Was that where you spent the majority of your football? Yeah, as because like I said before, I started playing there when I was four years, four or five year old. Mm. I played until I was about eighteen, nineteen, I think, was when I first left. But even right. when I left, I'd come back maybe for a couple of months or a year, and I fly out again, find another club abroad, and like that consistently. Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, growing up in Spain and stuff, uh, you know, being born in England, where do your where do, where do your where does your heart lie? Where do you where do you associate yourself? Like, when people ask me where you're from, I tell them I'm half Scottish, half Jamaican. Obviously, I'm born in London, so I got his English in me as well. But I grew up in Spain. Right. But say if I had to play internationally for someone, my first choice would be Scotland. Yeah. You know, my dad's Scottish and. Yeah, I'd go for Scotland as the first option. Mm, yeah, that's relatable. My mum, my mum's Scottish, so yeah, yeah all good. Um, so, uh, you know, you played in Scotland uh, for a bit after, uh, Greeno you know, growing up in 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 Tenerife. How was the, how was the how was the jump there? What what was the differences over there? The main difference that I found, obviously, the climate. Scotland was freezing yeah. for me when I first arrived. <laughs> 
especially with maybe like Christmas time as well. That was mad. For me, it was different. But I'd say the biggest change was the style of play. Like in Spain, I was used to, you know, the tiki taka style, keeping the ball, high intensity passing from one side to the other and attacking the spaces. Where in Scotland, I felt like it was just like, no, I'm not going to, it's like a bit of a war. Like you're right. just going out for a battle, get stuck into the ball. Right. Mostly relying on long balls and not many chances, but the ones you've got, you need to be taking them to win the game. Hmm. So yeah, there's a big difference in the style of play. Hmm. And then from there, did you, did you go back to Spain? Um, actually, yes. When I left Scotland, I went back to Spain. I played time for Marino again. Okay. And then at the end of the season, I moved on again. Hmm. Australia, am I right? Um, yes. I got back from Scotland, signed for Marino winter transfer window. And then the next winter transfer window, that's when I moved to Australia. Hmm. The end of I mean, season. what was that like? That must have um, been a big shot. It was... Yeah, no, it wasn't a big shock. Obviously, the distance at first, you're like, well, I'm yeah. on the other side of the world. Hmm. But once I got there, like, to be honest, I loved it out there. Great teammates, made great friends out there. Hmm. Lifestyle was good. I must hmm. say, the, the city of Melbourne is beautiful. I need to go back there at some point because it's beautiful. Hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and then from there, um, did you go back to Spain again? Um, from there, no. From there, I went straight to Cyprus. All oh, right, okay. Yeah. When and I left then, Australia, the season in Europe already finished. Hmm. And I signed that on Cyprus. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, being in Cyprus, uh, as we said, you know, very hot out there and stuff, but nothing yes. nothing like you've, you've uh, played in before. Know, yeah. yeah, so you, you've been used to it. Um, so how would you compare the, the playing standards from Australia, Scotland, um, Spain and Cyprus, maybe style-wise and, and standard? Standard, well, it all depends what level you go to play in. Like yeah. Spain is high level, up until the third region, it's good, it's a decent level. Obviously, UK has got so many leagues at a good level as well, especially with young players coming through. The yeah. lower leagues are starting to get better and better as, as the years go on. Right. Australia, I'd say, obviously, it's... it's decent level I'm not going to say it's a good top level like Spain okay. or or UK but yeah you do get good players you do get some obviously just people having playing for fun mm. you know mm. what I mean recreational so yeah it's a, it's a bigger difference in the bigger level I'd say in Spain and England compared to Cyprus and Australia it's easy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. did you did you find it easy selling to you know all these different places um yes because like me as a young player growing up in Spain, I knew there's only a certain amount of players can make it pro. Even Canary Islands, Canary Islands, only, Tenerife is only one professional team, which is Tenerife. Okay. Right. And the whole Canary Islands, you've got two, which is La Palmas and Tenerife. So hmm. there's so much, so many players that can actually sign for a few top clubs in the Canary Islands. So I knew at some point I'd have to, you know, move away from home, right. and progress somewhere else. So mentally, I was prepared and ready for it. So when it came, I had no problem or no issue with it at all. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, being 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 with, with all these different clubs and and different places, do you reckon it's made you wiser as a as a person, even though you're still young? Um, yes, I've had to mature a lot, obviously, because like when you first move abroad by yourself, it's like you are by yourself now. There's nothing. You got no parents, no friends to help you yeah. out. You know what I mean? You're out into the big old world by yourself, as they say. And I had no issue with it. Obviously, the clubs I went to, they made it easier for me as well. It's not like mm-hmm. you go in there by yourself to a new country. You actually go in there with a club ready, people there look after you. So it's not as hard as a move as people think it is. You, you do miss your family and friends. But obviously, you've got the bigger goal in mind, which is going, going pro. So at the end of the day, right. it's no issue. Yeah. I mean, what was that like, signing your first pro deal? That must have been a great feeling. I haven't signed it yet. Oh, right. I'm te- technically, I'm still amateur player. Well, right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, well, hopefully, what was it hopefully like, the, signing that deal? Hope, hopefully, this summer, we'll, 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 we'll be going pro, hopefully. Right, getting right. that pro contract. Fingers well, crossed. Signing amateur deals, to be honest, for me, I, I just, you know, kind of just sign it and get on with it. It's not where I want to be, so... Nothing really big for me, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. 
Um, um, would you recommend uh, a move abroad to any younger English players out there who maybe are struggling? Yes, I would. Especially for young players at academies that are not getting much game time. Like you need to go, you need game time. And going abroad, it, it makes you like wise as a person. You mature a lot. And it gives you that experience playing at different leagues. Different leagues, sorry. And I've noticed like academy football, it's all too beautiful. It's all too nice. When you go play senior level, like there's a big difference how they play. Like how, you know, it's like more real football to be, you know, saying away. So yeah, I recommend any young player that maybe go a year or two abroad. It won't affect your career. You're going to a decent level, it'll give you that experience, and you'll come back, and you come back, hit the ground running, and hopefully you get a chance for the first team. Yeah. Would you Would you ever consider a move back to England? If I find the right deal, yeah, I've got no issue with that. Like, if there's mm. a good deal, the door's open for me. I like yeah. for me traveling is no issue, as long okay. as I'm progressing as a player, a decent. You know, a decent deal, and I'm progressing as a player. You know, I've got no issues about it. Mm. Is is that just your aim then, just to get as high as possible and the best deal as possible? Yeah, obviously, I like to play Champions League at some point, Europa League. But, you know, okay. Cup, what well, obviously European football. Right. But, yeah. My main mm. my main goal is making it as high as possible. Hmm. Um. We'll move on to some more, you know, general questions about teammates, etc. Yeah. Okay, we'll start with the most skillful player you ever played with. Most skillful player, like I played with a couple very skillful players. Like some players, they might not be. You look at them, and when they get past you, they don't look as skillful because they keep it simple. But they get by you every time. You know what I mean? I like those type of players. And you got other players that they're very fancy with it. They like to do a bit extra, but mm -hmm. they still get past you as well. Right. As long as they're both effective, like end of the day. But some names, I don't know, some names. Alberto, for example, because he, he's got a tool and he keeps it simple, but you cannot get the ball off him. Mm -hmm. And I played mm -hmm. with another player who played with me in North of Spain. He's, I mean, he's a good player technically as well. Very good technically with the ball. I liked him a lot. Um, somebody out in Cyprus I could name, what's he called? Um, Amir, for example. He's very technical. He's always looking for that. Try and do a couple of step overs, you know, cut back on you maybe in one extra time, but obviously very skillful as well. Right, yeah. Um, who would you say in the dressing room is the, the kind of joker, clown, you know, funniest plays pranks? Yeah, well, to be honest, I like to be one of those as well. I like to be funny, you know, play a couple of pranks to get that banter going in the changing room. Um, like, like, for example, in Cyprus, you had me, there was another one called Poyo, we call him Poyo. Venezuelan player, he was funny. But they were like, and for example, in Australia, there's quite a few of them, to be honest. We had Musty, we had Consta, where there was a good banter. Like, well, I've been lucky enough to be, all the changing rooms I've been in, there's always been like a good banter, good, yeah. like, you know, solid team. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. Who, who would you say you, um, from plays you played with, who, who's the worst dress sense you've ever seen? I've seen a couple of stuff that I thought I'd never see in my life. For example, I've got a couple of friends in Spain. He came out to me in Cyprus as well, play. Sometimes he would just dress anything. You put first t shirt you see, the first pair of shorts, pair of flip flops, and actually ready for training. So, yeah, you'll never catch me dressed like that anyway. Um, let's, let's go on to the most underrated player you played with. Underrated. I wouldn't say the most underrated, but I know it was underrated this last season who I played with was a keeper. Um, cause we can't, I'm not going to lie to you, our team was a lot weaker than other, other teams, especially by numbers. We are playing a lot of young players. And he's a keeper that in a different team. You probably want to be in the, one of the keepers with less goals, but he ended mm -hmm. up being the most conceded that season. Yeah. Like some games, we, we lose maybe, they, we concede three, four goals. We used to right. make six great saves like during yeah. the game. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like he's underrated this last season. Hmm. Uh, and then we'll do we'll do two. We'll do who's the best player you've played with and the best player yeah. you played against. Yeah. Um just what does trial and count as? You know what I mean? Because that like, trial the yeah, autism is you can you can stick trials in there. Yeah, trials. I tried the autism twice. 
and I'd say like Senna is quality. Mm-hmm. We had another um, a midfielder which I loved as well. I can't remember his name though. And there's a centre back as well. He signed for what is it a team in Greece, first division. It was Olympiagos. I can't remember his name. The top defender as well. So a couple of good players there. Obviously, I played in Spain when I was coming up when I was 16, 17, playing for first team. Um, there's a couple of players in the first team who I thought were class. Like, they were too good for that league, and they were, obviously, but they didn't make it into a higher level for some reason. But yeah, they were top class players. And then, you know, with them players and any others you can think of, um, who, uh, if you could put a five aside team together, who would you have? Five aside team, like, I would have to do it. You know, I'm just going to stick to, like, more or less my age group. You know what I mean? Keep it simple. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, keeper, I'll keep the last keeper I had now this season, Harry. Put myself, obviously, in it. Um, I need one defender. Um, I'm going to put in, I put in Dodder from Australia. He's a bit older, but yeah, he's, he's a good player, all round player. Mm-hmm. Obviously, myself, I put in midfield. Who would I put in midfield? I mean, see, that makes it hard. Like, I've got so many friends that can play in midfield, like top bowlers. Like I could put in Alberto, I could put in Loisos. You know, that's the first two are coming to my name right now. I could even put a friend in. Uh, it's quite a few, but any I could take take any of them in midfield of me. Striker, like I would even play with a fake nine. I play with like a ten with a yeah. goal. I could play with Facu Perez, who's a good player. Valiente as well. He's more of a box to box like me. Um, more of a natural striker. He isn't as talented as other players, but he can score goals, which is Javan. Yeah. I'll put him in there as well because he just gets the goals, works out defensively and puts them away. Mm. Yeah, fair enough. Um, we'll, we'll go on to pre-match. What music are you listening to? And has it, uh, has it, has it changed whilst you've been in different places? Yeah, it does change because, like, obviously, going to different countries, you've got different change rooms, different, you know, cultures. Like, for example, when I was in Spain, obviously, a lot of people listen to reggaeton, Spanish music. Mm-hmm. So it's mostly Spanish music you're playing there. Obviously, when I was in the UK, in Scotland, I normally just had my own headphones on. I just listen to my own type of music, mostly hip-hop, rap. Right. A bit of drill as well. Um, obviously, out in Australia, you expect it to be some type of English music. Nah, because there's a lot of Latin players in the team. Okay. Spanish music as well. Obviously, I'd mix it up as well, put a bit of, you know, some rap or hip-hop in there as well. Hmm. But yeah, like, like right now, my pre-game music's got a bit of a mix of J. Cole, Pop Smoke, to name, to name two. A bit of Nipsey Hustle as well. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Decent. Um... Let's let's go with kits now. You know, I, I, I love my football kits. What yeah. what was the first football kit you ever owned? A Liverpool one. I've actually got a picture of it as well. Like mm-hmm. a baby. Like a baby, like one of the not my youngest youngest pictures, but one of my youngest pictures was me in a Liverpool kit and a football in my hand. That was okay. me from day one, I knew it was a bowler from there. Yeah. <laughs> um, playing in. Uh, you know, you've played in a few kits. Um, which is which has been your favourite to play in? Kit. Yeah. Ah, it's a hard one, you know. It's a hard one because, like, I like like last season in Cyprus. I like the white kit we had, the away kit. I've always liked playing in white. Same with like my 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 old school, like my old school, my old club Marino. I like the 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 blue kit, one of the newer ones we had. That was nice. We had like a, so a third kit. It was like there was one. It was like blue and black stripes. I like that one as well. Right. But I, I prefer with the white kits. We had a white mm. kit and maroon as well. So yeah, right. I like playing in white. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and then out there at the moment recently, which, which kit out there would would you like as a style style wise? Just which ones out there do you like? Um, Liverpool one obviously. The away kit, the black one, black and blue one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like PSG's Jordan one for Champions League. I love that one. Not gonna lie to you. Mm. Um, yeah, it's about it I can think of right now. Mm. Yeah. Fair enough. I yeah. say Real Madrid, but I don't like the club, so I'm not gonna say uh-huh. Real Madrid. Yeah, I mean, growing up in Spain, 
Which which club did you support, Spanish wise? Spanish wise, I never really had a club. I've yeah. always supported Liverpool, but like I like how obviously Barcelona how they play. Right. And it's a lot of watching when, especially when the the good years, a couple of years back, it's amazing to watch yeah. them play. Don't know why I've always got, like the underdogs. You know, I'm always kind of okay. like see growing up in Spain, it's always Barcelona, and Madrid, and with mm. the fans, I'm not gonna lie, they're a bit annoying sometimes. Yeah. So sometimes I like I like the the underdogs to come through and you know hit the trophies. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I agree with that totally. Anyway, thanks for coming on. Any yeah, shout outs? Any shout outs you want to make before we round off? Uh, shout out to everybody. I want everybody to see this. Shout out to all my friends, all my loved ones. Mm. Well, there you go. Uh, thank you, Connor, for joining me today. I appreciate yeah, it a lot. Thank you for having me. I'll be, I'll be I'll be definitely looking out to what the future holds for you. Thanks. See if you you can finally get the pro deal that you've been you know striving for. You know, hard work, dedication, and uh, yeah, yeah, maybe speak soon. Hopefully, yeah, we'll keep in contact for sure. Definitely, right, it's been definitely. a pleasure. I totally see you later, mate. See, see you later. later. Bye.